Now to a story that is really, 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 guys, out of this world. Look at these images. They're gorgeous. Newly released images of space are from the latest, the largest, really, digital camera ever built. They're from the Vera C. Rubin, wow. named after Vera Cooper Rubin. Um, she was an American astrologer uh, or astronomer um, uh, observatory. It sits on a mountaintop in northern Chile. Yeah, the images offer unprecedented looks at the light from millions of stars and galaxies. They come from about 10 hours of observation. The team's mission is to create a time lapse record of galaxies, asteroids and other objects as they change over a 10 year period. Joining us now to tell us more about these brilliant pictures is Phil Marshall, Deputy Director of Rubin Operations for Slack. Good morning, Phil. We are so excited to have you with us. We're, we're all kind of science nerds around here. Yeah, and so when we, we are see, geeky. when we see these pictures, it just gets us so excited. Can you tell us what makes this camera so special and different from all the other space telescopes out there? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for having me on. Um, so the thing that makes this camera different really is its, um, is its size. So it's 3,200 megapixels. And you know what that means, right? It means you can zoom and zoom and zoom and keep looking, see more and more detail. And that's really what the LSST camera gets us. What is, what is it that we're, I mean, I've read that it's dark matter that you guys really want to get, you, you know, get your eyesight on. But what does something like this actually give you that we haven't ever been able to see before? So it gets us everything, that's the thing. It's <laughs> such a big camera. You can see all the stars, all the galaxies in the southern sky, but also everything that's moving in this time-lapse movie, everything that's changing, uh, cosmic explosions going off. Uh, over the course of the 10-year movie, we'll see all of that. And the asteroids, you can see asteroids that are out there that we had no idea were out there before, right? That's right. Just in this first week of observation, we, we happened to see 2,000 new asteroids that hadn't been discovered before. So I don't know if you can see right now the images that we're taking a look at. Can you see those? It's I the can, pink yeah. gas okay, images. So what, yeah. Tell us a little bit about exactly what these are that we're seeing in all these pictures that continue to pop up, just so people at home just don't, oh, these are stars. Well, this one's my favorite. Almost everything you see in this image is a galaxy. Um, most Whoa. of them halfway across the universe. It's incredible. They all contain you know, billions of stars. Just uh, amazing how much you can see in these. <laughs> it's clean so, too, clean uh, images. I mean, how, how, how are you guys keeping track of all of these new you know, asteroids <coughs> and stars and planets? You've discovered over 2,100 asteroids in just a few nights, is that, is that correct? The asteroid part of it is a little more worrisome, right? Because they're constantly zooming through space. Do those asteroids pose any danger to us? Mm, or can these question. discoveries maybe protect us? They sure can. I mean, the, the good news with, with taking a time lapse of many images uh, night after night is you don't just see the asteroid once, you see it several times. And so you can trace out its orbit through the solar system and figure out that it's not going to hit us. So we did see seven near Earth objects uh, in our week of uh, demonstration observations, and none of them are going to hit Earth. So you can imagine us doing that for 10 years with uh, yeah. <laughs> all these types of uh, potentially hazardous asteroids. We may, we may be in a heat wave, but we're not going to get hit by an right. asteroid. Good okay, news. good that news. Good yeah. News. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you this. Looking ahead, what are you most excited about discovering with the Rubin Observatory? Again, mm -hmm. that massive camera that you guys are talking about, and how might this change our understanding of the, of the uh, universe here? Yeah, I mean, there, there's going to be so many discoveries. It's going to be a gold mine for, for scientists. Um, I'm personally interested in, in learning how and why the universe's expansion is accelerating. We'll be able to do that from the millions, billions of galaxies that we observe. But actually, I think I'm, I'm most excited about what, what other people might discover, and in particular, what um, uh, kids out there might discover. Mm, yeah. uh, we have a department at the observatory dedicated to making these data available to um, students, uh, kids, uh, awesome. people of all ages, scientists of all ages, and it'll be fun to see what they find. A <laughs> slew of exciting yeah. discoveries ahead. Phil Marshall from the Rubin Observatory, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to meet the people that you're going to find, or no, maybe not people, but beings that you're going to hey, find. Hey, you never <laughs> know. Just, just you in know? a couple of days from now. <laughs> We're not all right. alone. We're not alone. <laughs>